Hi, I'm Glenn Dewis. Welcome to episode 22. And this week we're looking at Photoshop's lens flare filter and how we can use it to create special effects. Okay, so in this episode, I want to show you a couple of ways that you can use the lens flare filter in Photoshop for special effects and actually for creating something other than a lens flare, a simple lens flare. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird saying that, but let me explain. Now, ordinarily, when I used to come to use the lens flare filter, what I would do is I'd, I'd actually be on my background layer and I'd come to the filter menu, choose render and then lens flare. And here, when the dialog box comes up in the little preview, you can click and drag and move around the lens flare that you're using. Now you've got a variation of lens flares that you can choose from at the bottom here where it says lens type. You can use 50 mil, 50 to 300 mil, 35 mil prime, 105 or movie prime. And you can also change the brightness of them as well. Now, what I wanna do in this tutorial is show you how we can add some kind of like a, a real big shiny spot on the sword here, a little bit of a reflection where the light is supposedly coming in off this imaginary light source in the top right hand corner and hitting the sword. So the one I'm gonna use for that are the lens type I'm going to use is 105 millimeter prime. So what I would then do is I'd position it by clicking in this little preview and putting it over the sword where I wanted it and then reducing the brightness just a little bit. The only thing I used to find with this was because it's such a small dialog box, I'd literally have my face pressed against the screen trying to make sure I positioned it exactly where I needed it, something like that, and then click OK. Once it's done it, I then have to undo it. So I go edit and step backwards to remove it. So now to apply that uh, shine, that kind of lens flare effect, what I would ordinarily have done was add a blank layer, filled that with 50% gray, and then gone back to the lens flare filter. So we go render and lens flare. And when we do that, it actually puts it in exactly the same place as the previous time as to when you use the filter. So I'll click OK. It puts that flare into the same position. And to see it on the image now, I just change the blend mode of that layer to hard light. So that seemed like a long winded way of doing things for me. And also it's, I had to be really accurate kind of thing where I placed it. I know I can click on this layer now and move it around, but there's other little telltale signs that I don't like about it. One of them in particular is the fact that you get these, oh, it's been done in Photoshop little lens flares. I mean, that's not necessarily hard to get rid of because what we can do, if we've got our foreground and background colors over in the toolbar set to their default, we can click on the foreground color, let's say if it's black, and where we've got H, S, and B, the hue, saturation, and brightness, we can change the brightness to 50, which then gives us a 50% gray color when I click OK as my foreground. So I could then get a brush, I could then come over to the Layers panel, hold down the Alt or Option key, click on the eye icon just underneath in the grey layer here to only see the grey layer, and then I could paint away all this kind of like, oh, it's been done in Photoshop, little excess bits, to then just leave my lens flare and turn the layers all back on, and then, yeah, I could move it all around. But if I wanted to resize it and make any other adjustments, I'd go to Edit and Free Transform, but then it's this huge layer that I've got to then resize. And there's quite a few steps involved in doing it that particular way. So this is how I would do it, and this is, in fact, how I did do it in the final picture, which is the effect I've got here. So all I'll do is add a blank layer, but this time, rather than filling that layer with gray, I'm gonna get my elliptical marquee tool. And I'm gonna hold down my shift key and drag out a fair, fairly decent sized circle, like so. Now, it doesn't matter where it goes, but if you wanna move it around, you can hold your space bar, click and drag and position it where you want it. But no matter what size of reflection or flare that I want, I'll generally draw out a bigger circle than what it's actually going to be. Once I've got my circle here and we can see the marching ants, then I'm gonna to go to edit and fill and choose 50% gray and go to the filter menu and then choose the lens flare filter. And while I'm in there, go back into the preview area again and this is where we can click and drag it around. But what I'm gonna do is actually drag it all into the dead center. So all those little bits that come flying off the edges here, the telltale Photoshop flare, um, kind of bits coming off it there. I'm going to drag those into the middle so they all get into the one area so you don't actually see them, which is great. So put that into the center and I can increase the brightness. Let's go back up to the default of 100 and click OK. 
Once it's done that, I can then go select and deselect to get rid of the marching ants. And then to see this bright part, this light, this kind of lens reflection here, this flare on the sword, I'll just change the blend mode over in the layers panel now to hard light. I can get my move tool and very easily I can reposition it where I want it. And the great thing is if I put it over the sword here, if I think it's too big, I can go to edit and free transform, get the transform handles, and to make the change of uh, the size in the same proportions, hold down my shift and alt key, or shift and option key, and drag on one of the handles like so. So we'll go for around about there, click on the tick to commit that, and then get my move tool and just position it where I want it. And that's how I did that in this particular picture here to create that kind of flare, if you like, or that lens reflection from the light in top right corner, hand corner onto the sword. So that's one way of using it. Let me now show you another way of using it. Here's a picture that I've got that was from a few years ago now, two or three years ago, of a photograph of a promotional image for a theatrical production of Cinderella. Now, the actual out-of-camera shot is this one here, where you can tell between the two, there's quite a bit of work being done to this one here. And in fact, I'm going to be releasing a tutorial showing every single retouching step, taking you from the out-of-camera shot to this final image here. But what I'll just quickly show you in this short tutorial is to show you how I actually use the same effect from this particular image onto this one here to turn the light source on. Okay, so let's go to the out of camera shot, which is this one here. Forget everything else, we're only gonna concentrate on the lamp here at the bottom of the staircase. So just like before, I'm gonna add a blank layer. I'm gonna get my elliptical marquee tool and drag out a circle in the picture here. Again, it's always bigger than what I probably intend the light source to be, because it's easier to move it around and reposition it and see what you do when you've got a bigger source of light anyway. So drag the circle in the middle, go to edit, fill and again we choose that 50% gray from the drop down menu click OK we keep those marching ants in position whilst we go to the filter render and lens flare and again you'll see we've just used it it's exactly the same position here right in the middle now I might actually increase the brightness just a little bit as well for something like that let's go for that we want this real hot spot in the middle and then it fades off as it goes out to the edges and we'll click OK then we can go to select and deselect and then change the blend mode to hard light so that we can see that light source beneath. We can click V on the, on the uh, keyboard or go to the move tool in the toolbar and then we can click and drag and position it where we want it. Now obviously at the moment what you can see is this very hard edge going around the outside here of our light source. So what I'll then do is add a layer mask, a white layer mask onto the layer containing my light source. Then to remove this but keep the actual uh, bright part in the middle where the light is on, I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to press G on my keyboard or come to the toolbar here and choose the gradient tool. Now you'll notice that my foreground and background color, foreground color is white background color is black. So then what I'm going to choose is choose the gradient from the top, which takes me from my foreground to background color, which is the very first gradient. I'll click on that and then click OK. So now what this means is I can then choose a radial gradient from the tools, sorry, from the options at the top of the screen here, which is second one along, choose a radial gradient. And then I'm going to click right in the middle of this light source. I'm going to hold down my shift key and drag outwards right to the edge of the light source like so and then let go and you'll see that it takes away that hard edge so basically what it means is just as you can see in the layer mask actually if we go over to layer mask basically all it's done is the middle bit which was uh, where the white part of the gradient was added reveals the light source and as we dragged outwards it got darker and darker and darker until it went black when you couldn't see the edge and that's where it got rid of that very very hard edge there so that's generally how I added the light source onto the actual lamp just there. And for those of you who uh, may not have seen it, very, very quickly, one way that I added light onto these back paintings here was using the technique I call the never-ending lighting rig. And that is incredibly easy. All you need to do, add a blank layer, get your brush, change your foreground and background color to their default by pressing D. And then with a white foreground color, decrease the size of the brush. This is where it needs to be small. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure there's no settings with the brushes, which there aren't. And I'm going to add a dab of light in the middle. And then I'm going to change the blend mode of that there to overlay. And then what you can do with the move tool is drag that around. And you'll see you can get some kind of like a little spotlight, which is great for finding all these little 
details around all over the place. So if I position it over this picture here, we can then go to edit and free transform, resize it to what we want it to be so it lights up that picture. I could then press Command or Control J to create a copy of it, get my move tool and put that on the other picture as well. And because they're on their own layers, I can control the opacity. But the idea here is that this lamp has now been turned on and then the paintings would obviously get a bit of light spilling onto that from this lamp, which is why we brighten them up. And in the final picture, in the actual finished retouch, I also did a bit of dodging and burning and whatever on the actual people in the picture here, just to make it look as if the light was brightening up them just a little bit more as well. Okay, so thanks for checking out this episode. I hope you like the content. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to drop me a line to glynn at glynnjewish.com. But in the meantime, make sure you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And also, I'd really appreciate the support if you could share this video or this channel with anybody that you know who might like to see the content. But for now, for this week, that's all I've got for you. I'll see you next time.